All praise to the Most High God. Uh, Tonight's topic is called Resistance, the Spirit of Satan. Resistance, the Spirit of Satan. Let's open up with the book. Let's open up with the book of Mark. Okay. You know what? Before we get that, give me John 6, 59. Let's start there. John chapter 6, verse 59. Let's open up with that. John 6, verse 59. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 59. Mm -hmm. These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. So now this is Christ. Christ was going around the villages, teaching the people the laws of the Most High God. Go ahead. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? He says, this is a hard saying because a lot of the times when Christ taught, he, he, he taught in, he spoke in parables. You understand? Because he knew that there were those of those that followed him that did not believe. So he spoke in parables on purpose to get rid of those that did not believe what he was teaching. Go ahead. When Jesus, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he mm-hmm. said unto them, does this offend you? Does this offend you? Because they were getting offended for the fact that the things that he was teaching, they didn't understand. He spoke in parables unto them. Watch this. Give me that in, um, give me Matthew. Okay. Give me Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 10. Go ahead. And the disciples came and said unto him, Mm -hmm. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why do you speak to the people in parables? Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but Mm -hmm. unto them it is not given. You see what he was telling them? He says, the reason why I'm speaking to them in parables is because unto them it was not given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto you, disciples, it was given. So guess what? The same way it was true back then, it is true today because guess what? We are teaching this gospel of Christ. We are teaching according to the way that Christ taught because what did he teach? He taught the law. You understand? So our people that did not believe, he spoke in parables because why? He knew that they hated the laws of God. That was the problem. You understand? Hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. Okay. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. He knew that our people did not want to hear law and order. And that's what he was teaching. You understand? Read that. Isaiah 30 verse 9. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Read. That this is a rebellious people. Mm -hmm. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That is the problem. There's always been the problem from day one. Since Since the day when the Lord delivered us out of Egypt... We've always had the problem with the commandments because in the wilderness, we was giving Moses hell. What was the problem? The law was the problem. You understand? Read. Which say to the seers, see Mm -hmm. not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Because you see what you see what they were saying to the prophets? It says, don't tell us, don't don't show us our wrongs. Don't teach us the truth. You understand? Prophesy deceit. Tell us the things that are going to what? The things that are going to make us feel comfortable. That's what they wanted. That's why today when you look at the Christian church, it's packed. It's packed with our people that hate law and order. You understand? Because when you look at the Christian churches, you understand? These, these, uh, the Christian churches, there's always packed. You always wonder, where do these people come from? But when you look in Israel, guess what? The people, they come in, but they're coming in one by one. Why? Because we 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 on the straight and narrow. It's only a few people that are going to get it. It's only a few people that are going to be able to receive what is written so they can get the kingdom. You understand? Read that again. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 30 verse 10. Go ahead. Which say to the seas, see not. Mm-hmm. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak Read. unto us smooth things. 
prophesy deceit. So now what you want to notice here, it says, it says, it says, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Watch this. Give me that in First Timothy, okay? Give me that in First Timothy chapter 4. No, Second Timothy 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. The reason why they say prophesy not unto us right things, because what does that mean, right things? You know what? Before we get 2 Timothy, give me Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17. I want to show you why our people, they say prophesy not unto us right things. I'll tell you the spirit behind that, okay? Where does I go? Deuteronomy, sir. Deuteronomy 6, verse 17. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 17. Read. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God mm -hmm. and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. So the subject matters about us keeping the commandments. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. You see that part right there? You shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. What is the right things that our people don't want to hear is the commandments. Because you know what the commandments bring? Commandments bring responsibility. You understand? Whenever you hear people that say, no, that's not what it means. No, you can't judge me. They're, what they are telling you is that I don't, want to want, I don't want to take responsibility for my actions. That's what they're saying. That's what they are saying, but they won't come out and say it but they're going to use other words to try to confuse you. You understand? Read that part again, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 18. Go ahead. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. You see that part right there? You shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Because when you do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, guess who gets to benefit? Not only you, your nation gets to benefit. You understand? So what they're really saying is that they, are not want to, they don't want to be responsible, one, for themselves. Two, they don't want to be responsible for their nation because that means that the, na the whole nation is going to be looking at you. You understand? So what does that mean? Void of responsibility. You don't want to take responsibility. You don't want to be held accountable for your actions. That's the reason why they say prophesy not unto us right things, but prophesy smooth things prophesy deceit because deceit will always keep you in the state of confusion in the state of being irresponsible that's the point you understand now go go back to second timothy now second timothy 4 verse 3 let's get there second timothy 4 verse 3 second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 go ahead for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine you see that the key is endurance. It says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Because endurance means you are in the fight. Because you know when you go for a jog, you go running, you have to endure. He says, no, I want to build my endurance level. You find that you can run, but you, can, you, can't, you cannot even run two kilometers. You are already feeling like your, your lungs are on fire. Because guess what? You need to build your endurance level. And in order for, for you to do that, it requires effort. It requires consistency. It requires application and diligence. It requires discipline. You understand? All of which means responsibility. You understand? Read that part again. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. For the time will come when they will not, meaning our people will not endure sound doctrine. So the key is endurance. So what must they endure? The sound doctrine. Give me that. Let's get the doctrine. Okay, give me that in Sirach 19, verse 19. The sound doctrine. Because our people don't want to, they, they, the key is endurance. They don't want to endure. Okay, Sirach 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 19. Go ahead. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Is the what? Is the doctrine of life. The knowledge of the commandments of the Most High God is the doctrine of life. That's what our people don't want to endure. 
They don't want to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to endure keeping of the commandments of the Most High because that is, that's a daily thing. That's a lifestyle change. It's not a Sunday thing. I mean, it's not a Saturday. It's not a Sabbath thing. It's a daily thing. Every day, that's how you must live. You understand? Ray? And they that do things that please him shall receive of the fruits of the tree of immortality. Meaning they're going to receive eternal life, living forever, ruling forever, dominating the nations forever on earth. Okay, let's go back. Second Timothy 4, verse 3 again. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They're not going to endure keeping of God's commandments because that's the sound doctrine. Read on. But after their own lusts, Mm -hmm. Shall they heap themselves to themselves teachers having itching ears? So now what you want to notice is that the reason why they say speak not unto us right things, Pro speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit, is because they want to go after their own ungodly lusts. So guess what? Going after their own ungodly lusts, what, is the, what, is the, what does it mean? It means irresponsibility. So that's why they, our people don't want to hear God's commandments. Why? Because it, they, it, in their spirit they know it means I must be responsible. So that's why they go to the Christian church, they go into politics, they go into religion, they go into they follow the system of democracy because, yes, you ever notice when you, when you examine all the movements, right, the movements that our people have ever been involved in, when you look at them, the reason why they didn't succeed is because those leaders they never required the people to change. That was the problem. It was common in all of these movements. They never required the people to change. Because when you look at those movements, there was a lot of adultery. There was a lot of backstabbing. There was a lot of deceit. There was a lot of fraud. There was a lot of lying. You understand? A lot of killing. Why? Because the leaders, those leaders, they never required the people to change. That was always the problem. You understand? In all of them. All of them, there's the exact same way. The people, the leaders never required the people to change. You understand? They would gather all this great knowledge, but they never required the people to change. Take care of your family. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. Submit to your men. They never did that. You understand? Stop stealing. They never taught the people that. You understand? Read that again. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Read. For the time will come when they mm. will not endure sound doctrine read but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears today would be your pastors would be your politicians you understand your ministers and all that those are the those those are those are the the the, the teachers that our people are flocking to you understand because our people have an itching ear so because of they have an itching ear, they know that that politician is going to scratch is going to scratch that itch. That pastor is going to scratch that itch. So therefore, they don't have to change because they go to places where they will give them license to be in that wickedness. Give me that in Sirach chapter 5 verse 15. Sirach 15 verse 20. Ecclesiasticus chapter 15 verse 20. They will go to those people that know that these people right here, they are going to scratch my itch. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 20. Mm -hmm. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. Read. Neither hath he given any man license to sin. You see that part right there? The Lord never commanded any man to do wickedly, meaning to go against his commandments. Neither hath he given any man license to break his laws. But when they go to, when they go to those teachers, they know that those teachers are going to scratch the itch that they have. That's why they flock to those places because those people are not going to require them to change. Give me Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Go ahead. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. You see that thing? And they cause that them are led. It says, cause them to err. It says, the leaders of these people cause them to err, meaning to sin, break God's commandments. They give them license to sin. 
That's why when you examine these movements, in order for them to grow, what are they doing? They are putting the women on top because it's about women empowerment. So when you look, look, just look at EFF. There's a lot of women in, 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 in the EFF that are, that are over the men. There's a lot of women in the ANC. Just look at these political movements. You see the woman is on top. You understand? The women, they are the ones. The woman is the center of everything. You understand? And some of, some of these so-called leaders, they do that to get a lot of following. You understand? That's the spirit of Satan. You understand? Read again. Verse 16. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Read. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Mm -hmm. And they that are led of them are destroyed. They that are led of them are destroyed. Why? Because our people in there, they are destroyed in this movement. In the church, our people is destroyed. Just, you cannot even reason with a, a Christian going, a Christian a Christian woman that goes to church every Sunday. You can't reason with them. They have no reasoning capacity. You understand? These church boys that go to church every Sunday, listen, you cannot have a, an objective, logical conversation with them. Everything about them is about emotions. They are very emotional. They are very, you can't reason with them. But I can reason with a drug dealer. I can have a sensible conversation with a whoremonger that doesn't go to church. And he's going to be able to what? When the scriptures come out, he was like, you know what? That's actually correct. You know what? I'm doing that. But those that go to church, they don't, they don't want to acknowledge what is written. But yet they go to church saying they believe this. They don't believe this. You understand? Okay. Now, go back to where, you, where he was at. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 again. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, mm -hmm. but after their own lust shall they heap to on. themselves. After, after their what? But after their own lust. But after their own lust. You know, you know what you want to notice? It says, the time will come when they will no, not endure sound doctrine. They are, not going to, uh, they are not going to endure, meaning they're not going to hold on to sound doctrine. But it says what? But after their own lust. So they are going to enjoy going, they are going to hold on to their own lust. That's the key. They're not going to hold on to sound doctrine, but they will hold on to their own lust. And they're going to go to those teachers or those leaders that will give them license to continue in, that, in those ungodly lusts. That's the point. Go ahead. But after their own lusts, shall mm -hmm. they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Next verse. Go ahead. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. You see that part right there? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Remember what we read in Isaiah. You understand? It says, this, this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the laws of God. They will turn away their ears from the truth. Meaning what? Sound doctrine in verse 3. Go ahead. And shall be turned unto fables. And they're going to be turned unto fables, meaning lies. Lies, vain deceits, philosophies. They're going to turn their ears, though, to what? To lies, fables. It's things that are made up. Man-made doctrines. They're going to turn their ears to those things. You understand? And that's why you see how people are so confused now. Give me that in Second uh, Thessalonians. Okay. Give me that in Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. Read that. Shalom. Come on. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Read that. Shalom, sir. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can 2 you Thessalonians me? chapter 3 verse 10. Go ahead. For even when we were with you, mm. this we commanded you. No, no. That if Second any should... Wait, wait. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. 2 verse 10. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Mm-hmm. 
because they receive not the love of the truth because that they, they might be saved because they did what because they received not the love of the truth because they received not the love of the truth meaning they made a deliberate decision you understand not to receive the love of the truth which is god's commandments go ahead read because they receive not the love of the truth mm -hmm. that they might be saved Read. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. You say, so because they don't want to receive the love of the truth, the Moses said, I'm going to what? He says, I'm going to send unto them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Meaning you are going to so strongly believe in this lie that it doesn't matter what new information you receive, you're not going to receive it. Because you are so strongly that's why when the scriptures come out, a lot of the times you hear a lot of this from the sisters. They say, no, yes, I hear you, but, you know, I need to pray about it. I need to see if, 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 if it agrees with my spirit. Because why? Because the Lord has sent unto them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. So now they are holding on to that lie that any type of information that will come out to destroy that lie, they don't want to hear it. They are blocking it because... Them holding on to that lie, it gives them license to do whatever they want. That's the point. You understand? So what's sitting behind the decisions that they are making is based upon what? The lie and the lust that they are holding on to. And they don't want to let it go. They don't want to let it go. Go back to Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Come on, Isaiah 30 verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 verse 9. Mm -hmm. That this is a rebellious people. Read. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the laws of God because they receive not the love of the truth. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 10. Read. We say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So now what we are seeing here is that this is the, the mindset of our people. And this mindset is the mindset of irresponsible, irresponsible behavior and conduct. You understand? This right here is an example of our people being irresponsible because they don't want to be accountable and, and, what? and, be, and be adults. They don't want to grow up. This is an example of our people don't want to want, not wanting to grow up because for you to grow up and mature, that means you have to be responsible and accountable for the decisions you make. You see that thing? Our people don't want that thing. That's why when the scriptures came out, when Christ was teaching, they were always getting offended. Why? Because Christ was teaching the law. The law requires you to be responsible and accountable. And the law teaches you maturity. Watch this. Give me Mark 4 verse 16. Mark chapter 4, verse 16. Let's read that. Read that, Mark, Mark 4, verse 16. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, mm -hmm. who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So now he's talking about the crisis he was going into the four types of Israelites. So now... Right near, it says, there are those that likewise are sown on stony ground. A stony ground is ground that is what? Made of stone. You can't plant anything on a stone. You understand? It says, who when they've heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. So it's like you, you planting. You're planting on a stony ground where there's tiles. The seeds will fall, but they're not going to take root. You see that thing? Go ahead. And have no roots in themselves. You see that part right there? And have no root in themselves. Because they're not going to take root because they are sown on stony ground. Go ahead. And have no roots in themselves. And so endure, but for a time. Mm -hmm. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. 
You see that part right there? It says, but afterward, it says they will endure, but for a time. They're going to be in this truth for a while. But it says, afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Now, you are going to be tested on what you say you believe. It says, immediately, they are offended. You see that part right there? Because they were not applying themselves. It was just nice to know that they are Israel, but now to be an Israelite, it requires responsibility. You understand? In order for you to be an Israelite, being an Israelite is a, is a heavy job. You understand? It's a heavy, responsible job because now you have to be responsible not just for yourself, but for your nation. You have to be responsible for the whole nation, not, for, not just for yourself. Your actions affect the nation of Israel. That's the point. But he says, immediately they are offended. You understand? Give me Luke 7, verse 23. Luke chapter 7, verse 23. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 23. Come on. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see what Christ said? He says, blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Because if you're offended, that means you're not blessed. Because... Guess what? what make, when you are blessed, you will not be offended by the word of God. In fact, you will welcome it because you know it's profitable for you. Give me that in Revelation 22 verse 14. It says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Watch this. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. Read. Blessed are they that do his commandments. You see that part right there? Blessed are they that do his commandments. So if you do the commandments of the Most High God, you are blessed. That's where the blessings come from. The blessings come from you keeping God's commandments. So go back to Luke 7 verse 23. Read that. Luke chapter 7 verse 23. Come on. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see that part right there? Guess blessed is, is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Because when you keep God's commandments, you are going to be blessed. When the scriptures come out, you will not be offended. You see that part right there? So when Christ was teaching, what was Christ teaching? He was teaching the law. You see that? And the people, be, the people was offended that did not want to keep those laws. Because remember, when Christ taught the law, he required the people to change because that's what the law does. It requires you to change your lifestyle. The way you live and the law exposes the fact that you are not living correctly. Now you have to live according to what is written. That's why the people was offended by that. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of 1 Timothy 2. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed no, no. God. No, no. 1 Timothy. Where are we at? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, 1 Timothy 2, verse 11. Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So this is a commandment. It says, let the woman learn. Learn. That's the key. Let the woman learn. Because when you are learning, that means your mouth is closed, your ears are opened. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Meaning you're going to subject yourself to what you are learning because you are being taught. That's the point. You see this thing? Hold this. Give me Sarah 26 real quick. Ecclesiasticus. Okay, I want to touch on this thing. Okay, Sirach 26 and verse, Sirach 26, verse 14. Sirach 26, verse 14. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 14. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Is a what? Is a gift of the Lord. So a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Remember what the scripture says. It go back to 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. 
Come on. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So in order for her to learn, she must be silent and subject herself from and subject herself to what she's learning, which is what? Instructions according to the laws of God. Now go back to Sarah 26, verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So when she's silent, what, the reason why she's silent is because what? She's learning. And loving woman is a gift of the Lord. She's silent because she's learning and she's, she's a loving woman because she's being taught how to love. Then it says, she's a gift of the Lord. That's a gift right there. You understand? Go ahead. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. So he says, there's nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed. Because she's instructed out of God's laws. Give me that in Romans 2. Romans chapter 2. She's instructed out of God's commandments. You understand? And because she's instructed out of God's laws, she'll be what? She's going to be silent. Watch this. Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. Come on. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Right. And knowest his will. Mm -hmm. And approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. She is instructed out of God's laws. So it says there's nothing so much worth as a, as a mind well instructed. Because this mind is instructed out of God's commandments. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. So she's learning so she can what? So she can be better at her, at her job. So she can be an asset to her husband or to her nation. That's why she's silent. You understand? Now, go back to 1 Timothy 2. I mean, go back to, yeah, 1 Timothy 2, verse 11. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Because she's been instructed out of God's commandment, she must subject, she must humble herself down to the laws of the Most High. You understand? Read. No, no, hold this. Ephesians 5. We coming back here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So you must submit. When you submit, you must give yourself, you must give your whole self to what? To your man. Because he's your Lord. He's your leader. He's your head. You understand? It says, as unto the Lord. Meaning, if Christ was to come into your house, the way that you, the black woman will behave if Christ is coming to see to her house, she will make sure that, listen, you can even see your face on the floor because it's going to be shiny. You understand? That's how she must look at it. That's how she must be when she thinks about her Lord. That's how she must be when she thinks about her husband. You understand? So if Christ is coming to your house, you're going to make sure that even the food you cook is on point. You understand? The house doesn't smell funny. Everything is on point. There's no dishes in the sink. Listen, everything is in proper order. So that's how you must do it. That's how the sisters must behave herself when it comes to her husband, when it comes to her Lord. If you're still under your father's roof, you make sure that you do it the same thing because your father, guess what? He's, your, he's Christ in the house. If all the sisters behave like that, guess what? Listen, the stuff that you, the foolishness that you see, you're not going to see that. And you're supposed to see, you're supposed to find honor in that thing because it's an honorable thing. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. And he is the savior of the body. Come on. Next verse. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So the same way the church, which is the nation of Israel, 
is subject unto the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, guess what? The wife also must be subject unto her husband in everything. Meaning she must submit, submit herself 100% to her husband and the rule that the husband has over her. We're not talking about, um, we're not talking about misusing the woman. No, no, no. We're talking about the wifely duties that the wife must do according to the command that the husband gives her based on what is written, according to knowledge, according to the laws of God. Now, go back to First Timothy now, okay? First Timothy 2, verse 11 again. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Next verse. Go ahead. But I suffer Hold not. A... No, no. Jump down to verse 13. Read verse 13. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. He says, because Adam, that's the word forming, Adam, because Adam was first formed, then Eve. You know what? Read verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach, uh -huh. nor, nor to usurp authority over the man, Read. but to be in silence. So the Apostle Paul in the spirit of Christ is saying, but I suffer, meaning I allow not a woman to teach. So does it mean that women cannot teach? No, it don't mean that. Women can teach, but they, they can teach in their proper order, though. Give me that in Titus 2. Okay, in case there's some Jezebels online. Watch this. Give me Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The women can teach, but they can teach other women and they can teach the children. That's their order. So Titus 2 verse 3, read that. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Read. The aged women likewise, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Come on. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. So women must be teachers of good things. Go ahead, next verse. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. You see, so they can teach. That's why it says teachers of good things. Now he's going to tell you who they must teach these good things to. He says what? Read verse 4 again. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. They must teach the young women. Go ahead. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Read. To love their children. To love their children. So, yes, they can teach. They can teach the young, the aged woman will teach the young women. They, and the things that they're going to teach them is what? Is to be sober. You understand? Not to be drunks. To love their husbands, not boyfriends. To love their children because they don't know how to love their children. You understand? Read. Verse 5. Verse 5, to be discreet, mm -hmm. chaste, keep us at home. Keep us Good. at home. They must take, hold on, they must take care of the household. Read on. Keep us at home. Mm -hmm. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. You see that part right there? Obedient. That goes back to 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. That goes back to Ephesians 5, 22 to verse 24. Go ahead. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Because sisters, when you disrespect the, the leaders set over you, you are blaspheming the word of the Most High. That's the point. You understand? Now, go back to 1 Timothy now, 2. 1 Timothy 2, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. So he says, I allow not a woman to teach, but we know that women can teach. The only people that they cannot teach is the men. Women cannot be teaching men. Go ahead. No, to usurp authority over the man. Meaning to exalt authority over the man. Read on. But to be in silence. But to be in silence. They must be in silence because they are under the man. The man is the one that is going to guide. The man is the one that's going to teach. The man is the one that is going to what? Cancel and correct. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, 
Because then Aram he... was, hold on, because Aram was first form. That's why the woman is not allowed to be over men. Because Aram was first formed. He was created first. Right? Then what? Then Eve. Then Eve was created after. Now I want to deal with that. Give me Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. I'm going somewhere with this. Just pay close attention. Genesis 2 verse 7. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So now Aram was, this is when, when he says, for Aram was first formed. That's what we're reading about it here. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. This breath of life that was given to Aram was the commandments. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. 2nd Ezra 3 verse 5. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. And gavest a body unto Adam without soul, mm -hmm. which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made mid, and he was made living before thee. So Aram was breathed into him the breath of life, and he was made living before the Lord. He was made a living soul. So what was the breath that was given to Aram? Read verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. That's what, that was the breath that was given to Aram. The commandment was the breath that was given to Aram. Read. Which he transgressed. Which he broke. He, come, he broke them because what? He listened to his wife. Read on. And immediately thou appointest death in him mm -hmm. and in and in his generations. Now stop right there. I want to show you something. What we read in Isaiah earlier on, you see that part right there, it says, which he transgressed. He was given the commandments, which he broke. And immediately thou appointed death in him and in his generations. So not only was he, he wasn't just responsible for himself, he was responsible for his nation as well. So whatever type of decision he made, Good or bad, it affected his nation negatively or positively. That's the point right there. So it wasn't just about him. No, it was about those that will come after him as well. You see that thing? That's why when the law comes out, the people twitch like robots. Why? Because they understand in the spirit that I have to get myself right. I have to let go of my lust. I have to, get, I have to let go of the evils that I do. Because not only am I responsible for me, but I'm responsible for my nation. I don't want that. That's the point. Go ahead. Which he transgressed, and mm -hmm. immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, mm -hmm. people, and kindreds out of number. Read on. And every people walked after their own will mm -hmm. and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. So now it says, and every people, because there was people there. That's another precept to let you know that it wasn't just Adam and Eve. There was people, that's why it says, and every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. Because what was Adam teaching? Adam was teaching the commandments and the people rejected that. And they did wonderful things before the Lord. Meaning what? They did wonderful things in their own eyes because those are the things that those are the things that was important to them. Not keeping of the commandments as Adam was teaching. You understand? Because Adam was a prophet. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 1. So Adam was given the commandment to teach the people. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. Read. I myself also am a mortal man, mm -hmm. like to all, and the offspring of whom, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. So King Solomon is telling you, he says, he comes from the lineage of Adam. 
It says what? It says, and of the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. That's a heavy statement right there. You understand? Because Adam was first formed. He's the same thing that King Solomon is saying. But he's also letting you know that he comes from that lineage. He's a direct descendant of Adam. That's what he's telling you right here. Okay? Watch this. Now give me Genesis 2.21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Read. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So now Eve was created out of Adam and she was brought unto the man. She was brought to Adam. Because you also see if even from the beginning, Adam was made first. You understand? Adam was created first and Adam was given all these responsibilities when Eve was not around. Now Eve gets created Eve is not created, she's, she's not left by herself. After she was made, taken out of Adam, now she's given to Adam so that she can be under Adam's, what? Under Adam's rule. Because women, you are not supposed to be by yourself at any given point in time. From your father's house, you go to your husband's house. That's how it goes. When Eve was created out of Adam's rib, where was she taken to? She was taken to Adam. You understand? She was not created and she was left alone there by herself. No. That is the point right there. That's a heavy thing. That's a heavy statement right there. Now read the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 23. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. Of man. That's what the word woman means. Now, keep going. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And they shall be one flesh. And they, Adam and Eve, shall be one flesh. Now, watch this. Give me, go back to First Timothy now. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Okay, First Timothy 2, verse 14. Let's read that. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So now I want to deal with that thing. Remember, Adam was given the commandments to teach. You understand? To set everything in order. Everything was in order already. And if to keep and maintain things in being in order... He had to be keeping the commandments and teaching the commandments. Now, you see that part right there? It says, and Aram was not deceived. So the reason why that kingdom, the, 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 the kingdom of heaven that was set on earth during the time of Aram, who destroyed that kingdom? It wasn't I, it was the woman did that. She was responsible for the destruction of the first kingdom of heaven on earth. The woman did that thing. You see this thing? Because as Adam was building, guess what she was doing? She was destroying. You understand? But he says, but the foolish were, give me that in Proverbs 14. This is what Eve was doing. You understand? She came behind Adam and did this. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Read that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Read. Every wise woman buildeth her house, mm -hmm. but the foolish pluck it down Pluck it down with her hands. That's what Eve was doing. Because Adam was building, Adam, he was running the business of the Most High. Eve came behind Adam and plucked the kingdom down. That's what she was doing. You understand? Now, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, once again. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, mm -hmm. but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So now the deception came through the woman. So it says, but the woman being deceived. So who was deceived? The woman was deceived. That's what that was the transgression when Eve got deceived by Satan. Now, watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Because remember, 
Aram's job was to teach Eve. That's why when she was created, she was brought to Aram so Aram can teach her so that she knows how to her mind must be after her, her husband's mind, which was Adam. Okay, watch this. Genesis 3 verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Read. And he said unto the women, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. So now the serpent is asking Eve this particular question right here. Very, very pertinent. Okay. The serpent, when it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast. This serpent right here, guess what? Give me that in um, 2 Corinthians. Okay. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. Start there. Second Corinthians you know chapter eleven. Start of verse three. Then we're gonna jump. Second Corinthians eleven verse three. Read that. Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse three. Read. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that in Christ. So now he's saying the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. He says, your mind also should be what should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Because in Christ is simple. Keep the commandment, get the kingdom. You understand? Now, the Apostle Paul is going to reveal the mystery of who the serpent is that was in Genesis. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. So now, hold on. So the serpent that beguiled Eve in Genesis that is explained in verse 3, the Apostle Paul is telling you in verse 4, that same serpent is the same serpent that would come and preach another Jesus. Who's there? That's the white man. The white man is the one that came and taught us why Jesus, Caesar Bourget. They gave us the white image of Jesus. That's not in the Bible. So what is the Apostle Paul teaching us? The white man is the serpent that beguiled Eve in the garden. The same spirit of Satan, that's the same spirit that is in the white man this day. Go ahead. Whom we have not preached. Because the apostles never taught a white Jesus. Go ahead. Or if ye receive another spirit, mm -hmm. which ye have not received. The, the another spirit, because the spirit that we received was to keep the commandments. The spirit that the white man would come with was what? Don't keep the commandments. Okay. Don't obey the laws of the Most High. Go ahead. Or oh, another gospel. Another gospel. Another gospel is all nations can be saved. That's another gospel. Read. Or oh, another gospel, which ye have not accepted. Mm -hmm. Ye might well bear with him. So now we are bearing with him with the scriptures because we are destroying the lies that he taught to our people. Jump down to verse 13 now. Watch this. Verse 13. Mm-hmm. For such are false prophets. No, no. Read that right. For Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13. Read. For such are false apostles. Mm -hmm. Deceive, deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So now it says such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Watch this, meaning what? They are not about the, the Father's business. They are not about teaching the true gospel of Christ. Next verse, watch this. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see that part right there? It's a, a no marvel, because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So what is the Apostle Paul teaching us? He is telling us who the serpent is. He transformed himself into an angel of light. Meaning he was not a snake. He was a man. He transformed himself into what? An angel of light. Meaning what? He came with what? The, with, with, with the quote-unquote knowledge. He says, don't worry, I got knowledge too. And this knowledge that I'm going to give you is going to make you equal or above your husband. That's the point. He transformed himself into an angel of light. You understand? 
Now, go back to Genesis 3 now. Read verse 2 now. Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So how did she know that? It says that we, it says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. How did she know? How did she know which tree to eat, which tree not to eat? Which tree to eat? Because guess what? It's go, it goes into literal trees, but it also goes into a metaphor. We're going to know, we're going to find that, that out in a minute. Go ahead, verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now, watch this. You see the way she's responding to the serpent? Watch this. Give me that in Genesis 2 verse 7 again. Go back there. Genesis 2 verse 7, we're going to read down. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So now what you're noticing here is that Adam is given the commandments, right? He's given wisdom. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Where? A garden eastward in Eden. So the Lord God planted a garden eastward. Keep that in mind. He planted a garden eastward in Eden. Go ahead. And there he put the man whom he had formed. He put the man who he may, he, whom he had formed. That's Adam. Read on. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight mm -hmm. and good for food. And what? And, the, and good for food. And good for food. This is going into literal trees. Read on. Like we read about in Genesis 129 with the diet. Read. And good for food. Mm -hmm. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Read. And the tree of knowledge. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now that's, you see, this, this right here, this is a metaphor. It says, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So this tree of life right here is going into what? The commandments of the Mosai, right from wrong. Okay, watch this. Jump down to verse 15 now. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Meaning to take care of business. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Thou mayest freely eat. That goes into Genesis. Give me Genesis 129 so we can get that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. Read. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So now that's what is going into now. Go back to Genesis 2 now again. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 16. Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And God and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. The, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. That's what we read in Genesis 129. Next verse. Go ahead. Now, this is the instructions given to Adam what to do, what not to do. That's the same things now Eve is responding to the serpent with because Adam taught Eve. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. For in the day that thou, that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now watch this. Watch this. Go back to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. 
So when he says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest ye die. So when he says the fruit of the tree, the tree is making reference to what? Man. It's a metaphor. Give me that in Mark 8, Mark chapter 8, verse 24. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, it says, guess what? Don't eat that. Mark 8, watch this. Mark chapter 8, verse 24. Read that. Mark chapter 8, verse 24. Read. And he looked up and said, I see, as, I see men as trees walking. You see that thing? I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. So now, go back to Genesis 3, verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Read. But, the, but of the fruits of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So this fruit is going into doctrines. This tree is talking about what? Where to learn this knowledge, this doctrine from. When you learn, when if you go and learn from that man right there, you understand? You eat of the knowledge that he's got. It says, which is in the midst of the garden. It says, ye shall not eat it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. You're going to die if you do that thing. If you go and learn from that man in the midst of the garden, guess what's going to watch this? Give me the book of Ezekiel, okay? Give me Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. Read. That was been in Eden, the garden of God. Mm -hmm. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, the, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire the emerald and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So now we're going to find out who's Ezekiel making reference to. Go ahead. Because it says thou was, thou, it says thou has been in the, in the, in, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, go ahead. Verse 14. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Stop right there. He says, now he's giving, he's giving us the clues now. It says the, 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 the person is, is the, the person or the entity is describing. It says, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. That covereth. Meaning what? They're going to cover up the truth. You understand? They're going to change the truth of God into a lie. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Hold this. Go, go to Genesis now. Give me Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Read verse 23. So he drove Start verse, read verse 23. Yeah. Start at verse 23. We're going to read down. Genesis chapter 3 verse 23. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Talk about Adam. Watch this. So he drove out the man mm -hmm. and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims. Stop right there. It says, so he drove out the man, meaning Adam, and placed as the, at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims. Now, hold this. Go back to Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And of the ground, and out of the ground, meet the no, Lord no. God. Genesis 2, verse 8. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. Read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Eastward. Eastward in Eden. Eastward in Eden. Go ahead. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So Adam was put eastward in Eden. Go back to Genesis 3 now, verse 24 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. So he drove out the man. So Adam was driven out now. Hold on. Adam was driven out. You understand? So he drove out the man. Read. 
and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims. Mm -hmm. Cherubims. Cherubims, okay, angels or spirits of men to fulfill the Lord's will. Go ahead. And a flaming sword mm -hmm. which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So now these cherubims to fulfill the Lord's will, it says, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, Aram is being blocked to get access to the tree of life because if he does, he's going to get the kingdom. He's going to get himself right, get the kingdom and live forever like he did before he see, come, before he what? He listened to his wife. You see that thing? So the Lord says, I don't want that right now. I'm going to punish you first. In the meantime, I'm going to put somebody to block access to the way of the tree of life. Watch this. It says, and a flaming sword. Give me Psalm 17, verse 13. This cherubim with a flaming sword, let's see what the Bible calls it. Psalm 17, verse 13. Read that. Psalm 17, verse 13. Mm -hmm. oh, Psalm chapter 17, verse 13. Go ahead. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him, cast him down, mm -hmm. deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. You see that thing? Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is which is thy sword. So the cherub, the cherubim with a flaming sword is the wicked, which is the sword of the Lord. So who is the wicked who is the Lord using as his sword? That's the white man. So this the same spirit that the Satan has. You understand? It's the same spirit that the white man has today to block every way to get to the tree of life. He'd be confusing everyone. No, Jesus is black in the Bible. Mm -mm. We're going to make him white. You understand? The Israelites are black. We're going to change that. We're going to make them white. We're going to put them in that land and say, these are the people of God right here. You understand? The Lord, the Bible says the, the, the uh, salvation is for only the 12 tribes. The white man changed that. He said, no, it's for everyone. They are anointed cherub that covereth. Now, go to his, go back to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14. Read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. That covereth. Hold this. Give me Job 9.24. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Watch this. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Read that. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Come on. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You see that thing? The earth. The whole earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. Go ahead. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. He says, this wicked who the earth is given to, he says, he covered the faces of the judges. Who's the judges? The children of Israel. Who's the main judge? The most High God. You understand? It says he covered the faces of the judges. The whole earth, who, who controls the whole earth right now? Who's ruling the earth? The white man. He's the one that has covered the faces of the judges. He's the cherub, the anointed cherub that covered. Okay, read that again. Verse 24. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Read. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Mm -hmm. He covereth the, face, the faces of the judges thereof. Read. If not, where and who is he? So if it's not the white man that's ruling the earth, that has covered the faces of the judges, who else is doing this? Because you don't see a, a, a white Jesus, you know, a, like a Chinese, you, you don't see a Chinese Jesus. You don't see a Chinese Arab. You don't see, you, I, mean, you, I mean, you don't see a, a Chinese Jesus. You don't see an Arab Jesus, you don't see a um, you don't see a Japanese Jesus. You don't see that. The white man is the only one that's doing that. He's letting you know who's covering the faces of the judges. Okay? Go back to Ezekiel 28 verse 14 again. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14. Read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Mm-hmm. 
and I have set thee so. Read. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. No, oh, come on. That's a deep, that's a deeper mystery. I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna go into that today. You can read about that in Isaiah 14. Go ahead. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Read. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Mm -hmm. Till iniquity was found in thee. Till iniquity was found in thee. What is that talking about? Give me wisdom of Solomon 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 3. Mm-hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 3. Read. But when the un un unrighteous went away from her, from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murmured his brother. No, no, read that right. Come on, read verse 3 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. You start talking about Cain. This is Cain right here. So guess, because the spirit that Cain was rolling in, that, what spirit was he rolling in? He was rolling in the spirit of Satan because Cain was ruling over Satan. So that's why it says, but when, when the unrighteous went away from her in, her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother, Cain. Okay, now, Let's go back to let's go back to where we was at now. Go back to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. But of the fruits of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So what Eve is responding to the serpent with is what? Is what Aram taught her. So now the serpent, guess what the serpent is doing? The serpent has discovered something in Eve. And Eve, guess what she's doing? The way Eve is responding is like, you ever seen when somebody says, you know what, could you wait for me here? I'm coming back. And somebody else comes and say, ma'am, why are you waiting here for? No, I was told I must wait here. But she's not saying it because she wants to wait here. No, she's saying it because she don't like the fact she's waiting here. Now, when she responds to the person that's asking her, she's responding, but in a form of a complaint. You see that thing? So that this person that's asking them, why are you standing here? They can be do something about the fact that they're standing there and they don't like it. That's the point. Now, read the next verse. Watch this. Verse four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Mm -hmm. Ye shall not surely die. You see, you see what the serpent is doing? The serpent now is casting doubt in the mind of Eve. He is casting doubt in her. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He is casting doubt. Because the way he is explaining to the serpent is not because she's, she, want, she, wants to, um, she wants to rightly divide the word so she can push the serpent. Mm -mm. She is saying it in a form of complaint because... The next verses will tell you because that's exactly what she, she was doing. So she didn't like the fact that Aram was teaching her the law and Aram was a god. Remember, Aram was a god on earth. Now watch this. Because remember, the reason why he cast doubt in her mind is because he knew that she was the weaker vessel. Give me that in 1 Peter 3 verse 7. 1 Peter 3 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Read. For after this manner, in the no, no, old time. No, no. no, first Peter. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Read. Giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel. As unto the what? As unto the weaker vessel. As unto the weaker vessel. So she's the weaker vessel. You understand? That's why the serpent went to Eve instead of Adam. Because Adam was already on that God level. 
So he couldn't go anywhere near Adam because guess what? He was going to be found out. Go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace mm -hmm. of life. Read. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. Now, go back to Genesis 3 now. Read Genesis 3 verse 4 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, mm -hmm. Ye shall not surely die. You shall not surely die. No, he's going completely against what she was taught. You understand? Read. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, mm -hmm. then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He says, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now remember, Adam was already on that God level. You understand? He was already on that God level. Give me Sirach 49 verse 16. It says, in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Watch this. Meaning you can be equal or above your husband in status. Watch this. I'm going to show you the status what that Adam was at. Well, well the, status that, the status that Adam had. Sirach 49 verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 49 verse 16. Mm -hmm. Sam and Seth were in great honor among men. Mm -hmm. And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. You see that thing? It says Sam and Seth. Sam goes into Shem. Uh, Seth goes into Seth. Were in great honor among men. You understand? It says, and, and so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. Adam was above every, he, he was a God on earth. You understand? Every living thing in the creation looked up to Adam. He was a God. He had fame, he had wisdom, he had status. You understand? He was a God. He had wealth, he had everything. You understand? He was in, he says what? Adam was above every living thing in the, every living thing. So this is some heavy stuff. And you know, uh, Sam, uh, Seth, they're all coming from Adam. You understand? These are our forefathers. So Eve knew that. And guess who? The serpent also knew that. You understand? He knew that. That man that was moving with the spirit of Satan, which is the same man that the white man is moved, that's the same white, that's the, that's the white man today. Yes. They knew that. He knew Adam was a god. He was above every living, living thing in the creation. Eve knew that as well. You understand? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1 and 2. We read this all the time. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. She preserved the first form father of the world mm -hmm. that was created alone. Go ahead. And brought him out of his fall. Read. And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. So Adam was a god. You understand? Watch this. Now, with all the status that he had, with all the fame, you understand, the wealth. And he had spiritual powers. Every living thing that existed, Adam named that thing. That she is everything. Adam is the one that, whatever he called it, that was the name thereof. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 23. Because what you want to notice is that with all the fame, with all the power, the wealth, all of the status, the honor that he had, this was this was moving in the mind of our foremother Eve. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 23. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 23. Come on. Neither will I go with consuming envy. With what? With consuming envy. Because envy is a consumptive spirit. It will consume you. It will destroy you. Neither will I go with, a, with consuming envy. She had that envy spirit on her because of the fame that Adam had. Instead of supporting Adam and working with Adam, you understand? She decided, I'm going to envy him. Watch this. Go ahead. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. 
Because when she was deceived by the serpent, she was she didn't have wisdom in her head. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23 now. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. For God created men to be immortal. So Adam was created to be immortal. And so were those that came after him. Go ahead. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. So Adam was at either, because remember, he said, let us make men in our image. So Adam was created to be immortal. And Adam was made in the image of the eternity. He was what? He says he made him to be an image of his own eternity. Adam was a reflection of God's eternity. That's some heavy stuff. Next verse. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil mm -hmm. came death into the world. Stop right there. He says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. So who envied the devil? Eve did. She envied the devil. Because of, of she had she envied Adam so much so that her envy of Adam, she envied the devil to what? To learn things from the devil to be equal or above his above her Lord. That's what she did. And that's the same thing today with our sisters. Because today our sisters, what do they do? They go to they go to school, they go to universities, they get these big education. I'm not saying the black men don't get educated. No, don't get it twisted. But they get all these degrees, the PhDs that they got and all that. But guess what? They all, the reason why they are doing that is so that they can look down on the black man. They can speak evil of the black man. Now, when they are with the black man, they look down on him. They disrespect that man. You see that thing? So they are not getting all that education to support this man and to still submit themselves to him and to reverence him. No. Now that they have financial whatever that the serpent has promised them, has given unto them, now they think they are equal or above the black man. That's why today the women that have high positions and all of that, guess what? The majority, not 99.9% .9 of them, they don't honor their husbands. They don't respect their husband. They don't submit themselves to their husband. You understand? They are running their husband. They tell their husbands what to do. Because they think money gives them that. No, 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 no. It has never been like that even from the beginning. Never. And I'll prove what I'm saying. Give me that in Tobit 10 verse 2. Tobit. Give me the book of Tobit chapter 10. Okay. Tobit chapter 10 verse 11. I'm sorry. Is that what I want? Mm. No. Tobit chapter 2. Tobit 2. Read Tobit 2. Start at verse 10. Yeah, Tobit 2 verse 10. The book of Tobit, chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. And I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall. Mm -hmm. And my eyes being opened, the sparrows muted, the sparrows muted warm dung into mine eyes. Read. And a wit and a whiteness came into my eyes, and I went to the physicians, but they but they helped me not. Moreover, Achiacharus, Achiacharus did nourish me mm -hmm. until I went into Elamias. Now, what happened was that uh, Tobit he went blind. You understand the sparrows. Um, they, they, they muted warm dung into his eyes and the, phys the physicians could not even help him. You understand? So he became blind. Next verse. Go ahead. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. You see that thing? It says, and my wife Anna did take women's works to do. Now that Tobit was blind, he could no longer provide. He could no longer work as he did. Guess what? Now this woman, she took women's works to do. She, she, she got a job to support her husband. Go ahead. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and mm. gave her also besides a kid. Read. And when it was, and when it was in my house and began to cry, 
I said unto her, From whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? Render it to the owners, for it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. So now Tobit is she because she's coming back now. She got paid. Not only that, they even gave her what a baby goat. You understand? They gave a goat over and above her wages. Now Toby is like, I don't have goats. So where does this come from? So in his mind, he's thinking she stole the thing. Go ahead. Verse 14. Verse 14. But she replied upon me. Because a lot of the times it is as when says she replied upon him is because he has another thing. You see that part right there when it says she replied upon him. Sisters be looking at this and thinking, yeah, okay. So there was arguing. You know, she was mad as hell. No, 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 no. We're going to find out. Keep going. But she replied upon him, upon mm -hmm. me. It was given for a gift more than the wages. So over and above the wages that I worked for, there were, this was given to me. Read. Howbeit, I did not believe her. No, she didn't, he didn't believe his wife. Read. But bade her render it to the owners. Come on. And I was abashed at her. Read. But she replied upon me. Mm -hmm. Where are thine arms and thy right steeds? Mm -hmm. Behold, thou and all thy works are known. So now you notice here, right? You see that part where it says, it says, where are thine arms and thy righteous deeds? Behold, thou and all thy works are known. So you notice that she did not disrespect this man because now he could no longer provide as he used to. She still came back. You understand? She still came back with the wages and all of that to her house. Okay? And guess what? The stuff that she got from, get, from getting paid, it was because of the good works that Toby did. She still reverenced this man. She didn't disrespect him. You understand? But when you see, you look at this, you look at the contrast between this woman and the black woman today. Now that they, 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 they're getting paid more, you understand? They quote-unquote educated more than the black man. They think they have the right to disrespect the black man. That's the problem. That's why a lot of them cannot keep no man. That's why a lot of them, they are not married. A lot of them, they have money. They be sleeping with these young boys. My Ben 10. Being ran through by these bank 10s. No respect for themselves whatsoever. That's what's going on today. You understand? All because of what our foremother Eve did. Okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. For God created man to be immortal mm -hmm. and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Read. And they that do and they that do hold of his side do found it. So now what you want to notice here says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Because Eve envied the devil. Not only did she envy her husband, but she envied the devil. So she wanted to learn to go against the instruction that was taught to her by her husband. So what am I going in? What, what am I going? What, where am I going with this? There is what I want to show you is this. Watch this. Go back to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, read verse 5. Okay. Read verse 5. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, verse 6, I'm going to show you the spirit of resistance now. Because when you read down from verse 2 down, you start to see the way in which Eve was talking to the serpent she was not speaking to the serpent because she was upholding the wisdom and the teachings that Aram taught her. No. She was explaining to the serpent the problem she got. So the serpent was like, no problem. I'm going to give you the wisdom that is going to make you equal or above your husband. You understand? Verse 6 tells you that. Read verse 6 now. Watch this. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now, hold that. Stop right there. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Remember, this tree is a man. The food is the, is the knowledge that is coming from this man. Remember, it says, even Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. So now it says, when this tree was, when she saw that the tree was good for food, meaning for knowledge. Go ahead. And, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. Okay. Meaning she could see this stuff. The stuff that the serpent was showing her and all of that, she was interested in that. Her desire was no longer to her husband. Her desire to learn, you understand? Her desire to be upright, it was no longer to her husband, like it says in Genesis 3.16. It was no longer because she envied the devil. That's why today you see the, the women, they bleach their skin, they put blonde weaves on their head, they put weaves and all of that, you understand? It's because of envy of the white woman, envy of the white man. That's what you are seeing today. Okay, read. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. A tree to be desired to make one wise. So this was not the trees that was giving fruit for us uh, in terms of diet that was given in Genesis 129. No, because there's no apple that is going to make nobody wise. So it's not talking about that. The tree to make you see what, and what, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. You mean what? To give a knowledge. To be able to go toe to toe with her husband now. That's what she thinks. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and mm -hmm. did eat. Read. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So now at this point, you notice here, notice the, ro the, the roles are being reversed here. This is role reversal right here. That's the, the you see, remember, because now the roles have been reversed. When you read Genesis 2, Aram is given instructions. Aram is given power of what, what, what to do. Genesis 3, it tells you that Aram taught his wife, because when we read 2 Ezra 3, verse 7 and 8, Aram taught the commandments to the people, including his wife. Now, in verse 6, the roles are reversed. Now the woman, she's the one that is teaching Aram. You see the problem? The roles are being reversed. Now you are seeing the spirit of resistance. That's the topic of the class. Resistance, the spirit of Satan. Because Eve was resistant to what Aram was teaching her. The proof of that is verse 6. Because when she, when she realized that this is good knowledge for, for me to learn, she took the same knowledge and brought, to, brought it to her husband. Now she's in the position of teaching her husband. The roles are reversed now. Give me Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Watch this. Because at this point, at this point, verse 6 right here, Aram became a simp on this one. Jeremiah 31. Watch this. 31 verse 22. Read that. Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Go ahead. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the in the earth, mm -hmm. a woman shall compass a man. You see that part right there? A woman shall compass a man. Now the woman has been given so much power to do what? Now they think they are equal or above the man. That's why you, you ever notice, go to home affairs, okay? Go to the traffic department. Go to, if you go to all these government, uh, you know, government institutions, you understand? To, for whatever services you want, the main people that you find Cody desking at the desk on the other side is not the black man, is the black woman. And when you get there, you, you ever see the way the black woman speaks to the black man? When you get to home affairs, go to the bank. When you go to the, on the, the tellers, it's all women, black women. You ever see how they look at the black man when you go there to open your account, to inquire about your account, your card is lost, they be looking at the black man, they look, at, they look down on him. Because the white man knows, if I put the white, the black woman in the front here, all this, the services, when we go to interact, we want services to be rendered to us. The black woman, she is, she, the white man has put the black woman in the position of power to what? To look down on the black man. 
to speak evil of the black man. Now you look at this women empowerment, all these construction companies, the civil engineering company where bridges are being built, who's been put to manage to supervise the men doing the heavy lifting? The black woman. You ever notice that? In South Africa, I mean, that thing is big because South Africa is run, is run by simps. You understand? And the majority of the time, all these tenders and all of that, just look at these high positions that supervising men doing like running, you know, men operating roads, fixing roads, bridges and all that. The woman is the one that's running the show, telling black men what to do. That's the spirit of Eve, the spirit of resistance, which is the spirit of Satan. You are seeing here in Genesis. Go back to Genesis 3 verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes Read. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, Come on. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and mm -hmm. gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So the roles were reversed at this point. That's why the Lord in verse 17, read verse 17. That's why the Lord was mad as hell. Read verse 17 now. Watch this. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Come on. And Adam, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You see that part right there? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Meaning what? Why did you allow the roles to be reversed when I told, when I dealt with you? Because the Lord, God dealt directly with Adam. The Lord didn't deal with Eve. He dealt directly with Adam. Now Adam decided, I'm going to listen to my wife. Then that's when the roles were reversed. You understand? Role reversal. Now Eve thinks she can come with some wicked, demonic, abominable doctrine to teach Adam now. Read on. Go ahead. And as eaten of the... And as eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Mm -hmm. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see that thing? Because why? Because he allowed disorder to come into the, into the marriage. That marriage at this point in verse 6 was out of order. It was not according to the order that we read about in 1 Corinthians. It was not according to the order that... Um, we read about in Genesis 2.21 down, that order was gone now because of what? Because of what, what went down. The resistance, that the spirit of resistance that was in Eve, it gave her the opportunity now to usurp authority over her husband. You see that thing? Whenever you see resistance, that's when you know Satan is in the room. There's no Eve or maybe there's no around it. The spirit of resistance, that's the spirit of Satan. Understand that. Now, from there, give me Genesis 4. Okay? Give me Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Genesis 4, verse 1. Watch this. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, mm -hmm. and she conceived. And bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Go ahead. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. Mm -hmm. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Adam was a keeper of sheep. Cain was a tiller of the ground. So they had responsibility. They had chores to deal with. Abel was dealing with the flocks. Cain was dealing with the, with the farming, the planting and all of that. That was his responsibility. You understand? Go ahead. And in, the, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So now in process of time, over time now, it's time for them to bring sacrifices to the Lord. Cain, he brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. He brought the offering of fruits and veggies to the Lord as an, you understand? He brought fruits and veggies as an offering. So Cain... Already here you are seeing the spirit of resistance in Cain. You understand? Because he knew better, but he did not do better. The proof of that, give me Genesis 3 now, verse 21. 
Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Mm. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. The coat is as he made coats of skins. This is after they had sinned now. It says he made coats of skins and clothed them. The coats of skin goes into what? The skins of the animals because guess what? At this point, this is when animal sacrifice was introduced. Animal sacrifice was introduced right here for them to atone for their sin. So it says, and he clothed them. Give me that in Psalms 132. Psalms 132 verse 9. He made coats of skins and clothed them. This was now the, intro, just the introduction of animal sacrifice. It was introduced here. Okay, Psalms 132 verse 9. Psalm chapter 132 verse 9. Read. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Mm -hmm. And let thy saints shout for joy. So the priest must be clothed with righteousness. The righteousness that, that was given at this point in Genesis was the what? The law of animal sacrifice. It was introduced here to cover what? To atone for their sins. You understand? So Cain and Abel, they knew that because their parents, they taught them the laws of God. You understand? So now go back to Genesis 4 now. Genesis 4 verse 3. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So now Cain decided, no, no, I don't want that. So Cain had the spirit of resistance and that's the spirit of Satan because he knew that for sins, we have to bring forth animals for them to, for the blood to be spilled because the animal will be, will, will replace will stand for you. Instead of you being put to death, the animal is going to be put to death. He understood that, but he decided to be what? To have the spirit of resistance. You understand? Go ahead. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So the Lord had, had, had respect unto Abel's offering. Because Abel, he offered the right stuff. You understand? According to the law. He offered the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and, and to his offering. Give me that in Numbers 18 verse 17. We read this all the time. Numbers chapter 18 verse 17. There is why Abel go that, went that route because it was what he learned from the parents. Okay, read that. Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Read. But the firstling of a cow, mm -hmm. or the firstling of a sheep, or Read. the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, mm. and thou shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire. Read. For a sweet savor unto the Lord. That's what our forefather Abel did. Abel did that. And that's why the Lord had respect unto his offering because he followed the instruction that, way, that the instruction that was given by the parents, Adam and Eve. Cain, he was resistant. So that's when the spirit of Satan entered into him because he had the spirit of resistance to what? God's laws. You understand? Genesis 4 now. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5. Come on. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm -hmm. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Read that again, verse 5. Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So now he says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Cain was upset. He was angry. Instead of doing correctly, he did not. But yet he was still upset. Yet the spirit of resistance, instead of dealing with that spirit of resistance, which is the spirit of Satan, he decided to escalate it instead of fixing it. So he kindled that fire instead. Instead of quenching it, he kindled it. That was the point. Read. 
and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Mm -hmm. And why is thy countenance fallen? So the Lord is asking Cain, Why are you angry? Why is thy why are, are you why are you angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Read on. Why 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 do you have a long face? Go ahead. If thou doest well, shall mm -hmm. thou not be accepted? If you do well, if you keep my, if you obey what I tell you, meaning what? Do what your brother did, because that's what your pet, that's what the pet, your parents, that's what they taught you. So honor your father and your mother. That's another thing that Cain did not do. Give me Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. He did not honor his father and mother. That's why he had the spirit of resistance. Now the Lord is checking him. You understand? He did not honor his father and mother. Read that. Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that part right there? Cain did not do that. He did not honor his father and mother. That's why when it was time for him to do right, watch this. Give me that in Sarak, okay? There's a scripture in Ecclesiasticus 22. Sarak 22 and verse 10. Actually, let's read verse 9. Sarak 22, verse 9. Yes, read that. Ecclesiastes 22, verse 9. Read. If thy children live honestly. If children, if children live honestly, go ahead. If children live honestly mm -hmm. and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. You see that part right there? If children live honestly and have wherewithal, meaning they have all they need, the basic need, the basic things in life, like you read about in Sarah 39, it says, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. Meaning the way they behave, they're going to honor their parents. Watch this. Yes. Give me Sarah 11, verse 28. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 28. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Judge none blessed before his death. Read. For a man shall be known in his children. You see that part? It says, judge none blessed before his death. Don't judge anybody blessed before his death. For a man shall be known in his children. You see that? So what Cain was doing, he was trying to make his parents look bad. That's some evil stuff. He was trying to make his parents look bad because guess what? If he lived honestly, according to the law, like we read in Sarah 22, okay, it says he shall cover the baseness of, of their, his, he shall cover the baseness of his parents. So, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to make his parents look bad. Over and above that, he hated his own brother because his brother was doing well. He did not want, he didn't want to do well so the Lord can accept him. And so he can honor his parents. He didn't want to do that. You understand? Go back to Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. If you don't do well, if you don't keep my commandments, if you don't, you don't follow the the guidelines which, which I've given you for you to atone, how to atone, it says what sin lieth at the door. So the spirit of resistance is the spirit of sin. That's what I'm trying to show you. The spirit of resistance is the spirit of sin, which is the spirit of Satan. Okay, go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire. Unto thee shall be his desire. So... The de Cain's desire will be to serve Satan. The D is Satan. And to Satan, Cain will be his desire. You understand? Meaning Cain's desire will be to serve Satan. Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. And thou shalt rule over him. Meaning Satan will rule over Cain. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 109 verse 6. Give me Psalms 109 verse 6. Cain's desire will be to serve the devil. That would be his desire. Okay, Psalms 109 verse 6. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 109 verse 6. Mm -hmm. 
Sit thou a wicked man over him. Mm -hmm. And let Satan stand at his right hand. You see that thing? That was, that, that's, that's Cain right there. It says, set thou a wicked man over him. That's why it says, unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shall rule over him. That's why he says, set thou a wicked man over him, and let the wicked man, that's Satan, let Satan stand at his right hand. So Cain's right hand was Satan. You see that thing? Because in Genesis 4, go back to Genesis. Genesis 4 verse 3, you see the spirit of resistance. You understand? Genesis 4 verse 7 is telling you, says, if you don't do well, sin lieth at the door. Because the spirit of resistance is sin. And once you have that spirit of resistance, which is sin, the breaking of God's commandments, Satan is at your right hand. He's the one that's making decisions for you. You see that thing? So what I'm showing here with Cain is, is what? The spirit of resistance. I show you the spirit of resistance in our foremother Eve. Now I'm showing the spirit of resistance in Cain. That's some heavy stuff. You understand? Because you... Mm, watch this. Woo! Oh, praises. Give me Isaiah 3 verse 12. Let me show you something. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Isaiah 3 verse 12. The book of Isaiah, hmm. chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors, okay, because they have the spirit of resistance, the spirit of Satan. Read. And women rule over them. And what? And women rule over them. And women rule over them. Go ahead. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, Cause thee to err. Cause thee to sin. And destroy the way of thy paths. And destroy the way of thy path. Because our, the way of our path must be the path of righteousness. So now it says women rule over them. Remember, Eve, the roles were reversed in Genesis 3 verse 6. Eve was teaching Adam. You understand? So that spirit that Cain had, where did she think he, he, he got it from? From his mother. He got that spirit from his mother. Because his mother changed the roles now. Eve was now teaching Adam. Now she's got the spirit of resistance, which is the spirit of Satan. Adam, guess what? Cain had the same spirit as well. Cain had the same spirit that his mother had. That's some heavy stuff right there. Because today in the black community, let's bring it to today. Today you see a mother having sons, right? The father is around, but you notice that the mother has more influence over the sons. You might find that one son is more closer to his father. And the son that is closer to his father, the other son is closer to his mother. And these two sons don't get along. Because one is moving with a masculine spirit, another one is moving with an effeminate spirit. They don't get along. You understand? When the father speaks, this one that is closer to his father, that is that is responding to that the spirit, that, that masculine energy, the one that responds to that effeminate energy from his mother, he doesn't like the one that responds to his father because he can relate with that masculine energy. It's, it's like that all the time. You understand? Whenever the mother wants to do something, she, she's not going to go to the son that responds to that masculine energy. No, she's going to go to that one that responds to that effeminate energy. Now the mother knows how to what. Now the, the, the mother is dividing the children. She's going to hate this one and you will be saying, you just like your father, Wayne. You just like your daddy. Hmm. That's a common thing in the black community, by the way. Don't get it twisted. That's an everyday thing. And the mother does not get along with the son that is closer to his father. She don't get along with him because she cannot manipulate him. Cain was moving with the spirit that the, his mother had. The spirit of resistance. Watch this. Give me that in 1 John 3 verse 10. 
Because Satan now, now Satan has taken, you know what? Hmm, watch this. Genesis 4, Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. You know what? Let's jump down, not Genesis 4, verse 8. Genesis chapter 4 and verse, verse 15. Uh, you know what? No, not 15. Genesis 4, verse 16. Yeah. Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. You see that part right there? So Cain was in the east of Eden. Remember, in Eden, Adam was driven out. The Lord put cherubims and a flaming sword to keep every way to the tree of life. That's where Satan is. That's what we read in Ezekiel 28. Now, where did Cain go? Where did Cain go? Cain went there in the east where Satan was. Now Cain is got Satan ruling over him. Satan is, is, in, is at his right hand now. Now Satan is his father now, the devil. Now, 1 John 3 verse 10. 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. Go ahead. In this, the children of God are manifest. Mm -hmm. And the children of the devil. And the children of the devil. Go ahead. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Mm -hmm. neither, he, neither he that loveth not his brother. He that, if you don't do righteousness and you don't love your brother, you are not of God. You are of the devil. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12, not as Cain. Not as Cain. Notice how he's saying he is going back to Cain. He says, not as not just not like Cain, read. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who was of that wicked one. So notice they are not saying Cain was of his parents, not Adam and Eve. He says that wicked one. Letting you know he's not talking about Adam and Eve, he's talking about Satan. Who was of that wicked one that was in the east, we, which, were, which is where Cain went? Read. Who was of that wicked one mm -hmm. and slew his brother. He killed his brother. Read. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he kill his brother? Read. Because his own works were evil mm -hmm. and his brother's righteous. That was the reason why he killed his brother, because of jealousy. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew now. Chapter 23, verse 1. Let's go to Rome now. Matthew 23, verse 1. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Come on. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, Read. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Because there was the leaders at this point. Go ahead. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, mm -hmm. that observe and do, and do not, and do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. He says, but don't do after their works because they say and do not, because they were hypocrites. Now watch this. Give me the book of John now, eight verse three, John chapter eight verse three. Now we are getting the understanding that scribes and Pharisees were hypocrites. They did not do what they were saying. Watch this. John 8 verse 3. The book of John chapter 8 verse 3. Read. And the scribes and Pharisees wrote unto him a woman taken in adultery. Mm -hmm. And when they had set her in the midst, so now these are the scribes and Pharisees. So in John 8, he's dealing with the scribes and Pharisees, right? And those that believed on Christ. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they didn't believe on Christ. You understand? Except for Nicodemus. It says, when they set her in the mist. So the subject matter here is dealing with the scribes and Pharisees and the, how they judge matters. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Mm -hmm. Thy record is not true. 
So they did not believe on Christ because the record that Christ brought with, they said, no, it's not true. That record that you bear is the record of you bear of yourself. You understand? So they didn't believe on Christ. Watch this. Now read verse 44. No, read verse 47. John 8, verse 47. John chapter 8, verse 47. Mm -hmm. He that is of God heareth God's words. Read. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Because they, he says, because ye hear them not, you don't hear the word of God, you are not of God, you are of Satan. You understand? Jump up to verse 44. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. Ye are of your father the devil. Stop right there. So he was telling the scribes and Pharisees that they are of their father, the devil. Because what was the problem with the scribes and Pharisees? They did not want to apply. They, were, they, they had the spirit of resistance to the application of God's laws. They taught it, but they didn't do it. So now he's saying, you are of your father, the devil. You understand? So who was he talking to? Who was he, who was he referring to? When he says, you are of your father, the devil. Watch this. Give me John 11, verse 47 now. John 11, verse 47. So he's telling the scribes and Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil. So is this, this is one long letter. Now we was in chapter 8. Now we're in chapter 11. John 8, John 11, verse 47. Read that. John chapter 11, verse 47. Read. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees. Mm hmm a council and said, what do we, for this man do, for this man doeth many miracles. Because this man is doing many miracles. Okay, go ahead, talking about Christ. Read. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see that thing? And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So who was the scribes and Pharisees re, uh, answering to? They answered to Rome. So when Christ was saying, ye are of your father, the devil, he was saying, you are of your father, Rome. That's what he was saying. That's heavy. That's what Christ was saying. You are of your father, Rome, the devil. You understand? Because... The Rome, who's that? That's white people. So what was he telling you? He was saying, you are of your father, Rome. Because they answered to Rome. They did not keep the commandments. The reason why they answered to Rome is because Rome was taking care of them. Today, that's your T.D. Jakes, your Creflot Dollar, your Pastor Chris, your Bushiri, your Mboro. That's them. They are of their father, the devil. You understand? Watch this. Give me First Maccabees chapter five verse sixteen. First Maccabees chapter five, verse sixteen. First Maccabees chapter five, verse sixteen. Read. Now then, Judas and the people heard these words. They assembled a great congregation together to consult what they should do for their brethren that were in trouble that were in trouble and as an assaulted of them mm -hmm. go ahead then said judas and unto simon his brother choose thee out men choose thee out men and go and deliver thy brethren that are in galilee for i and jonathan my brother will go into the country of Galad. Of Galad, meaning what? In, Gal in, in Greece. Galad is in Greece. So what was they doing? They were, now they needed to go and fight with the Edomites at this point. This is Judah Maccabee and his brothers. So now he's saying to Simon, say, listen, choose, choose out wise men here that will be able to look after the people while we are gone. Go ahead. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captains of the people, mm -hmm. with the remnants of the host of, in Judea to keep it. So now they are saying, okay, we're going to leave Joseph and Azarias. These were captains now to look after the people. So now the elders are telling you, listen, I need you to look after these people while we go 
and do and, and fight against the Edomites. You understand? I need you to look after the congregation. It's like, let's say there's a trip that needs to be taken. You have to go to Mozambique and so forth. Then I'm like, okay, I'm taking brother so-and-so. I'm taking brother so-and-so with me. The rest of you, you, so, you brother so-and-so, you're going to be looking after the congregation while I'm gone. Okay? No problem. That's a great honor. Watch this. You would think. Read on. And to whom he gave commandments, saying, Take ye the charge of this people, and see that ye make no war against the heathen until the time we come again. It says, don't go to war with the, the heathens that are round about you until we return. Okay. Now let's go to verse 55. Verse 55. Mm -hmm. Now what time is Judas and Jonathan when the land of Galad and Simon his brother in Galilee before Ptolemais? Before Ptolemais. Go ahead. Joseph the son of Zacharias and Azarias Captains of the garrisons mm -hmm. heard of the valiant acts of and warlike deeds which they had done. So now these two, Joseph, okay, and Azariah, now they had of the valiant, the, the courageous acts that Judah Maccabee and his brothers did. You understand? It's like you're coming into this truth. You hear about the stuff that was done before you came. Now you are moving in the spirit of vain glory. You also want to do the same things. Watch this. Go ahead. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. You see what they was doing? Remember what the, the commandment was. That's not what Judah said to do. Judah said, look after the people until we be returned. Yeah, they are, these two, they're saying, Lord, you know what? Let us go. Let, uh, let us also get, let, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are around about us because they wanted to get a name also. But that was not the instruction that was given. You see the spirit of resistance here because why? They had the spirit of vain glory. You understand? They, it, they, it, it, they was not satisfied with the instructions that was given. Look after the congregation, we're coming back. That's the same thing that Moses told the elders. He said, listen, look after if any questions you have, Go to the elders, they will help you. I'm going, I need to take care of business. Read. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was that was that was with them, they went toward Jamnia. Read. Then came Gogaius and his men out of the city to fight against him. So now they are waging war with Gogaius now. Go ahead. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. Now they were put to flight because they went against the order. The spirit of resistance, that's the spirit of Satan. Now look at what's going to, look at, look at the consequences that will come about for them going against the order. Read. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. Read. And they were slain that day of the people of Israel. About 2,000 men. So 2,000 men got put to death because of these two. Because of what? Because they wanted to get some type of name. They didn't care about the people. They, they thought it was about them. And because they thought it was about them, they resisted the counsel that they was given. Look after the people. Now 2,000 men have, have been put to death because of what? Because of their what? Vain glory spirit. Go ahead. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel mm -hmm. because they were not obedient unto Judas and to his, and his brethren. Read. But thought to do some valiant act. You see that part right there? It says, because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought to do some valiant act. They didn't care about the people. Next verse. Go ahead. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Now, that's a heavy verse right there. That's a heavy verse right there. Read verse 62 again. First Maccabees chapter 5, verse 62. Mm -hmm. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those 
by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. It says, you see what he's saying? It says, moreover, these men, meaning what? Meaning who? Uh, meaning, um, what's his name? Joseph and Azariah. So it says, moreover, these men, Joseph and Azariah, it says, came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance, deliverance was given unto Israel. So meaning what? There was not of the seed of those, those, those forefathers whom deliverance is given to Israel. Meaning what? In every captivity, the Lord will always set up those leaders, those men that deliverance is going to come by. The Lord always does that in every captivity. Not everybody can be given that position to do that. That's why a lot of the times brothers be coming into the truth. They want, pos they want higher positions. They want positions and all of that because they, they don't know about this. So they are forcing the course of the river. You see this thing? That's the point. Go ahead. Verse 63. Come on. Verse 63. Mm -hmm. How be it, the man Judas and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all Israel really? and of all the heathen, wheresoever their name was heard of. You see that thing right there? Because Judas and them, they, guess what? He, they, there was a family of courageous men and they follow after the footsteps of their father, Marathias. You understand? So the work that they was doing, it was ordained of the Lord for them to do that and the way they did it, it was also ordained of the Lord. That's the point right there. But what I'm showing you is when you go against the order because you have the spirit of resistance, this is what happens when you do that. 2,000 men were put to death because of these two. Because they wanted to do some valiant act. You see that thing right there? So, I'm going to end the class right here, okay? You know what? Hmm. Give me 2 Samuel 18. I'm going to end it with this. 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 5. We want to end it. We want to close it with this. 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 5. Now, at this point, to catch you up, those that have not read this, you're supposed to be doing your chapters. Now, at this point, Absalom, you understand, he was doing some evil because he wanted to kill his father. But David now wants, he's sending men out there so that they can also capture Absalom and bring him alive. Okay? Watch this. 2 Samuel 18, verse 5. Read this. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Itai, it saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, mm. even with Absalom. Read. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So everybody heard this. So listen, David is saying, listen, deal gently with the young man for my sake. Do it for me. That's what David is asking, right? You will, and everybody is hearing this command. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three dots in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom mm -hmm. while, he was, while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. That's not what David said to do. He went completely against that order. David said, deal gently with my son Absalom. You understand? Bring him alive. He decided, mm -mm, I'm going to kill him. He went against the king's commandment because guess what? He had the speed. He had Satan was dealing with Joab at this point. You understand? He had that. He had that spirit of resistance. That was his problem. Next verse. Go ahead. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. They smote Absalom and killed him. They went completely against David's command right here. You understand? The spirit of resistance, very dangerous. It's not for the, it's not, the spirit of resistance is not the spirit of building. It's the spirit of destruction and confusion. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.